Hello, this is Marilyn Fontaine from MJ Fontaine and welcome to the Creative Pioneer interview and today I have the amazing photographer, creative director, so many other names to this person which I'll allow him to explain, um, Clive Kofi Allen. Thank you Marilyn, how are you saying? Hello folks and thank you for having me on your show. Good, it's really, you know, for me it's really important that you come on here, we've been meaning to do this for some time so what i want you to do is just let us know what exactly do you do okay. in terms of your business the where do i begin that's the question that's exactly yeah i mean okay it, i mean many moons ago um probably going back 25 years i discovered the camera mm -hmm. and that's where it began for me in terms of starting to realize that there's another way to engage, you know, um, you know the creative world. Um, it wasn't something that was taught to me at school mm -hmm. in that respect. It wasn't something that was given to me as a, an option. It was something that actually I discovered through, you know, being very, very inquisitive and um, stumbling across that camera. Um, from then, um, I had to go through tremendous amount of hurdles to get to where I am today, right. you know. So, Initially, everyone would know me as a photographer, mm -hmm. and I think that's a, a massive part of my development. You know what I mean? Going into other areas, which I've now across diversifying. So I mean, so I do photography, a lot of photography. Mm -hmm. um, worked a lot within the music industry, uh, facilitated on tremendous amount of projects, some really cool projects. You know, be uh, creative directing, be consultation, be you know art directing and stuff like that. But ultimately, you know, for me, I like to bring it home. Mm. I like I came from analog era of photography, so you know, there was no digital screens and stuff like that, um, which you know, it took me a while to get my head around it. But now, you know, I got best of both worlds. Right. Do you know what I mean? You know, um, and then the work progressively got into you know the fine art arena. Okay. Again, I'm a reluctant artist in that respect, so I'm a bit <laughs> modest about people calling me an artist. But it's interesting only in that space because you mm. realise that you know that's part of the journey to understand the. You know the humility of letting go right. to progress. Right. Do you know what I mean? So that was another part of the program. Um, so a lot of works now featured in you know sort of global galleries. You know we have stuff in the in the in the national in the in the national portrait gallery, uh, the Hayward. Right. Do you know what I mean? We did mm -hmm. stuff in the South Bank. You know what I mean? We've toured you know literally internationally. Wow. Um, and then you know the most important thing now is about looking at the archive I'm, I've created. And how yeah. we can use that to leverage, you know, towards the, the future generation, as well as new work that I'm going to be creating. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And in the meantime, I direct, you know, and um, I'm now exploring a few other avenues, which is more on the business side of things, you know, because I want to also, you know, get behind and empowering artists to become self-sustainable. Right. Wow. Well, because you've used different mediums. You've used video, you've used photography, but your photography is not just... Um, what I would call just standard photography, even though you've worked with major magazines and, you know. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, the, the thing is, what's, I, what's interesting is that um, my journey into mm. the, the, the media industries right. uh, has been slightly different, I think, from most mm. people's. And partly it's due to my own personality. And partly it's just because, you know, I was not kind of like, from that privileged sector right. initially. So I've had mm. to fight to get yeah, in, a yeah. fight to, to, to own my identity. Yeah. Um, so throughout that whole journey, you know, in, you know, I started being, you know, the photographer just wants to be the greatest photographer. Okay. Every artist wants to be the greatest they can be. Um, but then I realized I was kind of like getting, getting lost in my own vanity of that idea. Right. And um, it was uh, Kate Garner. She, yeah, um, she, 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 she wrote an article once, and I think it was in the Sunday Times, and it was just relating to how black photographers were very afraid of documenting their own communities. And, you know, they, did, they, they had this kind of research mm -hmm. on this, and the stats were pretty factual. But beyond that, I looked at my portfolio, which was really diverse, actually. But really, I was still aspiring beyond something that I'm not. Not yeah. saying that we should limit ourselves to just our communities. No. Yeah. But I wanted to have, I couldn't see a, a, the identity shift mm -hmm. in the world I was in. And I thought she was really on point. Yeah. Even though I was, a, I was a bit peed off, because when you're a black photographer doing that kind of work, you know, you kind of get pigeonholed. Yeah. So you, you play with a double-edged sword, whereas if you're a white photographer mm -hmm. doing that, you are somewhat elevated, you become super cool, super fly, you're the guy. And I'm like, well, that ain't right either. <laughs> so ultimately, I had to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm going home looking at my work, I'm thinking, 
well, actually, I'm just a photographer. I'm a, I'm a visual artist I'm a, or I'm a visionary. And I never really saw it in black and white. Yeah. You know, but actually, if, if you put it into that context, and that I was to die tomorrow, you know, fingers crossed I still live. But if I die tomorrow, um, what would be my story? What would be yeah. my contribution? Mm -hmm. How would I have actually, you know, deterred anything that I could have done differently? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I decided that I was going to use that camera and explore, you know, what do we look like outside of the mainstream? Right. Yeah. You know, and what, and then also what other cultures look like outside of the mainstream. Yeah. So again, it was not, you know, restricted mm. to or limited to either way or course. It was actually yeah. about, you know, how do I explore and expand my repertoire? And then fundamentally, I found a whole new sensation of vibes within my work, within, you know, you know, printing in a dark room, right. within, you know, how I approached a subject, within how I saw light. I go, I went yeah. to the microcosm of understanding the principle of lighting. All right, before I even got into, you know, the idea of the cameras and the lenses. And I never was the guy with a big camera and a big right. lens. I would wow. work humi humbly with whatever I had available. Okay, mm -hmm. so it was later when I kind of really could afford or could hire in particular equipment. So I would always say to artists, never get too bogged down. Yeah. With the, all the, what you think you need to have to actually achieve that mm -hmm. element of, you know, engagement, you know. Because yeah. the idea is worth more if you think about it. So you know? it comes for me. It shows in your work when when you see the finished um, product, because it seems like there's there's been a there's some kind of transformation that's taken place, and it's not just through the electricals, you know, the camera, the, you know, the material. It's something through that's happened through the process. Yeah. It feels to me. So, you know, I see some of your images and there's specific, you know, tricks of light, mm. certain colors, um, you know, the, the effects are slightly different. So you've cut. For me, I see that you've used um, the process more than the actual equipment. Yeah. As well, a I, I think I think um, you know I, I think because I'm not coming with just the, working from inside the box. Yeah. Yeah. Having worked inside the box, yeah. <laughs> you know, I've actually enjoyed walking around the edges. Okay. And actually, sort of like realizing that actually there's probably more edge, more sides than just four. Yeah. Because if you turn it around, it becomes a bit more three-dimensional. Yeah, yeah. And then you start looking at it from another perspective, you realise that it's got sort of depth and scope. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and you start looking at how can you transcend that thought. And, you know, initially it's born out of frustration. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you know, they said necessity is the mother of, of invention. Yeah, yeah. And I stick fast to that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, pre-Photoshop, I was kind of always seen in sort of multiple dimensions of three or four dimensions right. in terms of how I see you yeah. in a conversation you know what I mean yeah. I'm, I'm we're having a, a, a superficial conversation but at the same time you know there's another conversation there's a, some, yeah. some subtext yeah. to the conversation yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean and then there's the agenda to the conversation mm -hmm. you know what I mean so you know that to me is like do I just I could just listen to you superficially and be happy with that yeah and you know go about my business <laughs> or I could actually listen to that conversation and think actually you know what that was interesting because you know, she engaged me in various ways yeah. and how that was done. And that yeah. made me feel kind of like, I can open up here, you know? And technically that is all part of the process, yeah. you know, um, you know, preceding um, digital, the, the, the engagement of photography was based on alchemy. Right. You right. know what I mean? And I've, 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 I've always adhered to the idea of light and photosynthesis. Okay. Yeah. So there's yeah. parallels running between the idea of, the, 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 you know, the, the you know, photosynthesis photography mm -hmm. for the synthesis life and there's yeah. an interesting relationship that used to happen yeah so um i've always kept to that spirit or that soul within yeah. my work do you know what i mean and then to transcend that into digital that was harder work yeah it must be different that I mean, was it, harder it's, work. it's quite interesting because how how was it um difficult for you because it goes to my next <coughs> question about how important it is for you to have creative control um well, I mean, it, it, creative control um, is one thing. I think it's difficult when you are in the middle of the road. So, like, for me to transcend mm -hmm. into digital, I had to walk that middle of the road for nearly two, three years, and it felt like you was in no man's land. Okay. Okay, so that's, yeah. a, that's a real yeah. journey, like, I'm telling you. I'm like, oh, do, <laughs> do I go there, you know? I mean, do I use that microwave to cook my food? <laughs> or I like my oven, I like the smells, I like yeah. the seasoning, mm -hmm. but the ready-made pack is there, mm -hmm. and you can get it now. So, you know, you have to put it into context, yeah. Yeah. you know? Because I, I knew I'm what it is to me to have artists to control. And I think, um, how important is it for me to be playful yeah. 
That's, you know, to yeah. create, you know, and still be in control of letting it happen. Right. So again, it's like, you know, again, music is a really massive passion of mine. Yeah. You yeah. know, and you know, the best music I've ever heard is when like, you know, when the jazz band, for instance, are just warming up and it sounds like a lot of noise. But they're coming the, together. And you know, all the orchestra, yeah, mm. and they go off in a preamble, you know what I mean? But then automatically, no conductor even, yeah. they just synchronize. Okay. And you find that is, you know, is there's a, there's a yeah. synergy to the yeah. harmony that the, there was a journey in the first place, and yeah. you know you trusted ourselves to get there, yeah. and um, that's part of the process for me in art and photography. Right. And it's part, photography is my catalyst. It's not the beginning. It's not the end. It's not the beginning or the yeah. end. Actually, it's the middle part of my process. It's really interesting because what you're describing there to me is that part of you surrenders to to something, and it's almost. Do you have how much? of that process is intuition and how much is it experience well i don't know guys can have intuition right i mean you yeah. know here's, 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 here's your debate you know can we have intuition Gosh, does can. men have intuition and no well this is important i mean <laughs> no i mean look, i've had this argument within the intellectual readers yeah. you know and we've had it amongst my peers who's working from you know from within the abstract art space mm -hmm. to photographers to filmmakers and you know you know amongst the peers you know, we all agree, you know, mm -hmm. like intuitively it's where it's more significant. Yeah. You know, however, it's least spoken about. Yeah. You know, okay. it's very much, um, you know, in a, in a calculus or in a reference right. to something. And I'm like, well, then it's not for me. It's not what it's about. I mean, I like, yeah. I, if I'm inspired, I'm inspired. Well, that's but, right. But, but fundamentally, I mean, you know, that no one, no two people are, are alike. Yeah. Even yeah. if they were twins, they're not alike. You know, so when I'm working, I mean, I can have similar processes to engage something, but I like to allow things to happen, sometimes yeah. to my detriment, but majority of the time, time, you know, it's to create something that's unique. So, okay, so when you're, supposing you're working with somebody, I mean, you've done quite a bit of um, what we would call celebrity photography, mm -hmm. and when you're directing or taking direction, is your intuition that informs you to actually change, you know, you well, know, like you're, you're going for a project and you, you feel a need to just change up the whole scene. Has that happened before and your intuition that allows you to... Yeah, I mean, the, it, it happens in too many different ways. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's so weird. It's like, I've been in sets where I've had it all, you know, pre-production, yeah, yeah. meetings. Mm. And that's really important because it helps to just to get the technology, technological yeah. stuff in some kind of alignment. Mm -hmm. But I want to do it so that I can be free to run rain and yeah. have adaption. Yeah. So my you know, my, my my producer or you know, you know, my first A D or second A D or whatever will be like, Oh, but that wasn't in a script Kofi. Yeah. You know, or you know, mm -hmm. you know, why are you adding that shot to that? But actually, you know, why not? Yeah. Because that's where it's taking me. Yeah. And if we are here to, you know, either you know, a part of a team or within the creative sphere, then surely we yeah. need to go with that, you know, and you may set something up for a client that really had this, you know, thought it's going to work because on paper yeah. it sounded good, but actually when they were there, you know, they could have a bad day. They may want to adapt yeah. something. So I always kind of leave myself open to that adaptation because I yeah. think life is never so static and rigid unless you get paid as, you know, 20 grand a day by the advertising agency. <laughs> then you're like, okay, I'll come and do that, that picture. Bit. But that is not necessarily, you know, the, the, and even if I did that, yeah. all right, there's a subtext to my story. Yeah. So I often worked because I mean I couldn't really afford to do art for art, you know, privilege sake. Mm. In terms of you know, you need to have particular things, workshops. You need mm -hmm. to have you know uh, a kind of a committed sort of um, you know story time plan and everything, mm. everything. So I used the commercial vehicle. Right. So I've always had that conversation with understanding a commercial remit, and then how to go beyond that commercial remit. So mm -hmm. then when I revisit my work, my soul's in there still. Doesn't mean I've done. I'm sure if I give them more. And yeah. they often required. So when I went back to that, I can then take a layer off, yeah, and then expand on that. Right. Do you know what I mean? So that the idea was that the work didn't just kind of end on the on the on the poster or on the magazine yeah. or on yeah. the consumer sort mm -hmm. of end user. It actually has um, another conversation that once revisited, you know, what I mean, it expands into a much broader territory. Right. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's key. That was mm. key for me, you know, it's like, you know, the difference between pop music and, and soul music or mm -hmm. jazz or punk or, you know, you realise that, you know, some music are created to in, intended just to be hitting the tar. Right. Okay, not necessarily mm -hmm. you're going to go back and play that to your children. Yeah. Or you're going to keep that as an heirloom or you have to revisit that mm -hmm. when you have a certain emotion. Right. And for me, you know, I've been so tight with music and the energy of how that can influence and, you know, yeah. adapt to people and people adapt to it. 
I see my work in a similar mm -hmm. precept, and I've always aspired to that. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying I achieve it all the time, but you know, hopefully, you know, from your your feedback or other people's feedback, the work itself, you know, is it, it has something in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and I think um, that space between, and I always use this, so people, please <laughs> bear with me. That space between the tick and the talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. is my indelible space. Yeah, yeah? it's the yeah. thing you can't measure. Right. You know, and I think we all have that space between yeah. the tick and the talk. So yeah. you know, people, you know, other people say that's the funk, you know, or that's the <laughs> hip and the hop, yeah. you know, or yeah. that's the jive. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that is then devalued. Right. It's cool, you know, put in, an, put in an urban space, and yeah. I'm, I'm like, forget that, you know, mm -hmm. that is actually invaluable. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know, so when I'm working with you know a, a, a subject matter, doesn't matter what level we're working from. You know what I mean? You know, it could be. You know, from the musical space, an mm -hmm. art creative space, uh, an actress performance space, it could be just me mm -hmm. and land space. I'm still working in that, I'm aspiring to that space. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I think that's something with me that I'm imparting. Yeah. And I think, you know, if we can get that, if I can, if I can transcend that and, you know, find a way to convey it, then it's, you know, it, you know, it opens up dialogue. Yeah. Because I want that reflection of the work after that is no longer mine, it's actually yeah. yours, because you're the one who are engaging that work. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm mindful of that. And it's funny because your experiences obviously reinformed your decisions, isn't it? So every piece of work you do, the experience reinforms that. <sighs> but also, you know, yeah, <laughs> it's true, it's true, isn't it? No, it's, it's, you know, I mean, you know, it is true, it is true. You've I mean, got a portfolio to show it, haven't you? Well, yeah, I mean, the, the good thing about photography is that it, it creates a trail. So mm -hmm. you kind of see the journey yeah. that you're yeah. on. So even if you're in a low curve, you can see. You know, you can go back and see that actually, you know what? I thought I was really, you know, on something, but really, yeah. what that was telling me there that I was really going through, yeah. uh, you know, an emotion, or yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's interesting. So yeah, very much so. So okay, so it's kind of, and I always say sometimes when we take on specific jobs and job ro job roles, it allows us to be disciplined in one way or another. Yeah. You know, because sometimes if you're just going down a creative route, it's all different directions where sometimes when you have to take on jobs that may uh, may or may not suit your vision they actually give you something else so they actually give you a discipline of yeah. budgets deadlines you know preparing you for something bigger no, absolutely but, you know absolutely i mean the thing is about um the the, the way the way art is perceived mm. in, in itself is you know is kind of like it's been dumbed down a little yeah. bit in a yeah. business sense you know um because it's not often measured as mm -hmm. a responsible role yeah you know, which means, you know, we're not, we're not just being consistent about, you know, yeah. nine to five or something like that. But actually, you know, um, it's actually how to kind of collaborate or how to mm -hmm. co-create, yeah. you know, in, um, how would you phrase this, in a kind of, um, in chaos. Yeah. You yeah. know, so when, 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 when things are not working out, you know, you find a creative person, may just sit back and think actually but you know we've already thought of something <laughs> yeah <laughs> because yeah. we, we kind of play with that a lot yeah, and yeah. you know and other people have some really good administrative skills mm -hmm. you know yeah. to you know process right. these applications and to be really about mm -hmm. attending surgeries and all the other things you do which often are not really the 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 forefront of the creative but it's all part of the process so i mean right. yeah. i mean i've got tremendous transferable skills okay well we can see that actually just how your work is adaptable and you know and changed but um, what discipline do you have that allows you to do this kind of work? You know, I mean, is it this a discipline? I, I mean, some people call it a stubbornness. You know, some people call it like um, resilience. Yeah. You know, some will be like, you know, um, my discipline is, is actually stillness. Yeah. If okay. anything, you know, yeah. my discipline is really about, you know, despite what you may think life has fed you or, mm -hmm. or thrown at you or challenged you with, Mm -hmm. that you know there is an objective yeah do you know what i mean and photographically is one way to transcend it and um, if i lost my camera tomorrow heaven forbid mm -hmm. then i'm going to find another way to transcend right. that right. you know so yeah. my discipline is you know using my senses you know listening and and looking you know and really trying to absorb and then you know transcend so like i said the, the same thing with photosynthesis and alchemy it's no different so that stillness is you being still within yourself for a while definitely and that so it's yeah. like a meditation yeah it's well you know it's, it's approaching it like exactly your own kind of meditation mm. you know i mean i think 
uh, I would never like to project, you know, this is how I do it, you should do the same yeah. thing. I, it's just like, come on, you know, take an element of what you think works for you, yeah. but you are you. You don't dress like me, you don't walk like me, you know, you, you know what I mean? We may be the same, yeah. I don't know, shade, we may be the, you know, height or same built, but actually, you know, we're all different, you know what I mean? So. But I think that what you're saying, to be that dynamic outward, you need to be going inside to kind of refuel yourself. Yeah, so I, I, what you're following is a normal standard. Yeah, well, I mean, see, for me, it's just normal. Cause no, exactly. I, mean, I, 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 think, I work with people, so I see this when they <laughs> out, 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 and they come back in. Yeah. And for someone who's watching this and, that, like, you know, um, they're trying to get into this type of industry and, they, you know, they're outward, outward. They probably will think that they have to be out on it all the time. Well, this is this is this is why I defer. I completely I shut mm. down a lot. I mean, I don't. I mean, you know, I don't even overexpose myself to going to too much galleries. Right. You know, I don't overexpose myself to by you know by you know, referencing magazines. Mm -hmm. I do look at magazines and I yeah, do go to shows, important. but it's not a be all and end all for yeah. me. And when I do go, and I'm genuinely inspired by it could be the, the greatest or the smallest yeah. things, I really appreciate it. You know, I think that's because you're looking from an, an eye that has not been influenced by advertising or trends. You can uh, actually look like through the eyes of a child. Sometimes. Yeah, well, it, I think it's it maybe. I mean, that's one of the things I try to preserve about my work. I mean, yeah. I try to, um, because I'm self taught, you yeah. know, and, you know, I really appreciate my work when it, it, I, I kind of stumble across so many things. Yeah. And I, probably that was part of my early trauma working in my favour um, and also against me sometimes. Kiba, you know, she hits. She hit, she she brought to me like um where everyone's trying to go high, mm -hmm. she understood low. Right. You know, and it's like it's like microcosm to macrocosm. Okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So but she did that in, in an effortless mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. You know, and not that the songs were amazing. Yeah. Definitely. You know, and she Just took that amazing. too. She's the first I think African lady to come and smash it in the BBC. Yeah. And around the world, you know, you know, and then her, her that episode with um, Bella Fonte, you know, all of this kind of thing for me was mm -hmm. was significant, and she brought that with a grace. So that was one. Um, the photographically, Gordon Parks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Her, Gordon Parks. Yeah. Gordon Parks for me. Um, again, he, he he really hit a note for me mm -hmm. because <clears throat> probably had a similar background as well. So that made it sort of like for one reason because I couldn't find anyone that really I could aspire to growing up yeah. in my creative world that I knew of um, and when I learned that not only was he a great photographer that mm -hmm. used that tool to engage social dialogue yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean right yeah. you know working from mainstream you know media press you know at the times and then actually then from that you know the writing scores directing you yeah. know superfly you know what I mean yeah. and, you know you know that to me just said you know actually why limit Yourself. yourself not to say you spread yourself thin because unfortunately you know you know there's a time people try to say oh, you're trying to do too much yeah. now in the media or engagement if you're not doing those things then you're pretty much redundant yeah. so it's very interesting you know yeah. so we've been doing that for a very long time mm -hmm. so you know you know I so say really he was one of the one of the original classics that took me into that space and then um, another amazing amazing um, I call him a general in photography, um, was um, um, Sido Kita. And Sido Kita, um, uh, it was an old guy now, but he's work, he just photographed his village. He just, that's what he did, he spent his time, uh, I think it was in Senegal, uh, he just photographed his village. And if you saw the images, the level, so basically uh, he's an old man now and some curious gallery in France stumbled across some, some negatives <laughs> and pictures. When they saw what the man had under his bed, I'm talking, you know, you can't buy a picture for less than 10 grand, yeah. you know, but again, you know, the context of value mm -hmm. and the context of what we do as visual artists, the context of and us understanding this in, you know, and that's why I'm here, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. to, to look at, you know, how are we engaging this, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean, how are we collecting and are we accrediting the creators, you know what I mean, yeah. while we're alive, because I think, you know, we've got this, we've got caught up in this kind of idea and pursuing things which are kind of, nearly superficial mm. um, or, or, or they limit themselves to that superficial um, sort of investment not realizing that actually it's, it's indelible mm. if you understand that which is part of you yeah do you know what I mean you know and how that transcends the limitations of that thing that's going to wear out next month mm -hmm. or next year yeah you know so yeah I'm definitely about mm. pushing that part of myself because these guys have set the way some didn't know they were even doing it but actually they set the tone do you know what I mean? And I think ultimately, as a, you know, as a creative person, 
the, the thing that is daunting is that you have responsibilities. I mean, that's like really daunting for a creative person. Um, but you do, yeah, yeah, no, you no. do, you have a voice, yeah. you know. And it's not about you know, um, you know, just setting an agenda. And that's what it's about. I think that's mm -hmm. a cop out personally. You know, I think it's about being honest about your emotions. You yeah. know, when you're up, you're up, you're down, you're down. But you have a vehicle that can actually yeah. measure that or even reflect that. And others can have the same experience because it enables them and empowers them to do the same. Mm -hmm. So that's the affinity and the connection mm -hmm. to the work. It's interesting that others can have experience because it leads on to the next question. And what advice would you give to somebody starting out um, in this type of industry, um, film or photography? Um, and what, could, what, what is it that you could have done better in hindsight? Mm. Okay. Um, the first thing I say to anybody who's starting mm -hmm. out in, in, in the creative world is actually take a time out and walk around the business. Yeah. Actually understand mm -hmm. the, the, the nature of the industry, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because it's not pretty. Yeah. And I think that the sooner you overcome that, not to say you become don't got too engrossed in it, but it's actually take the time to appreciate mm -hmm. some of the things that, you know, once you get immersed in your creative world, you may not be able to appreciate because you'll be frustrated yeah. to do the two at the same time. Um, and I think also it gives you a notion to prepare yourself, mm -hmm. you know, so you have that extra armor, yeah. you know, so you understand that, you know, there's a, a means to engage in and there's a means not to engage. However, what's key to any person pursuing the journey of creativity is to know themselves, you know, get into that identity mm -hmm. of you, whoever, whatever aspect of you you think it's important that you want to really walk that journey with. Yeah. And that's not, you know, it's easier said than done. You know, but it's, necessity, but it's a necessity. I mean, yeah. that's what we're all aspiring to. You know, I'm there. I'm still aspiring to. Yeah. You know, and my work kind of informs me. <clears throat> excuse me. My work kind of informs me. You know, um, what state uh, uh, of evolution? Mm -hmm. I mean, today. Yeah. That's, <laughs> you know, well, that's, that's creative energy, doesn't it? That kind of tells you what's going yeah. on with you, you know, on, I mean, you on, know. on a deeper level. I mean, you know, I mean, I saw Miss Dynamite this weekend. Oh God, man, Miss Dynamite. Oh, this one woman act. I'm thinking this lady has really stood the test of time and the fans were like new fans young kids mm -hmm. and you know but it was just the love in the space because yeah. she was admitting that and she was allowing other people to share that and the, the beats were dirty you know it was yeah. some reggae riffs were kicking so she wasn't trying to compromise it at all she just being yeah. about the consistency yeah. and I think for me in my, I, see, I see my images I see my work as that baseline, you know, yeah. and some people it is intimidating because they're not seeing it every day. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, you know, you, I've, I've just challenged the the, the the kind of the the stereotype or mm. the mythical scenario, and you know, again, you know, it's important that you know we have these opportunities mm -hmm. to disperse the myth. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm a guy, I bleed, I cry, yeah. you know, I have woman <laughs> trouble, I have life, yeah? However, you know, yeah. within that process, you know what I mean, we're still learning. Yeah. And, you know, I think we could all learn together. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, well, I think you know, creativity is one of the most unique catalysts, art form, yeah. if there is, yeah. for us to actually <laughs> explore ourselves. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know, and yeah, why not? You know, and, and there's no limitation mm -hmm. for my work. If you've seen the work, you know, I want to challenge. Is that because you immerse yourself in, in, in that, that, you know, that energy, that creative energy, you just immerse yourself without even thinking about, I mean, your, um, your negative self talk must be minimal when you're working because you just go for it. Oh, that's it, actually, when, you, when you're actually in the, the creative, when, when I'm actually in the doing, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's the it's the it's the ultimate high. I could yeah. live there. Yeah, you, must, you know, yeah, right? The energy, but yeah. but you realize you can't. You burn yourself out. So what it is, you have to appreciate the journey. Yeah. So every day now, there's little things that happen, and I kind of just smile to myself because yeah. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm so grateful. I actually see that. I stop and look at it. Yeah. Where some people just just walk on by. You know. Well, they can have a negative self talk that make them doubt. Well, they yeah. work. Yeah. Well, I think well, I think we all have negative self talk. It's a mm -hmm. question of what do we do with it. Yeah. You know, because you know, because it's negative and it's positive. So that's that's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to, I charge myself. So I'm like, well, if you're gonna be giving me some, you know, as Jamaican, yeah. as a duppy talk, yeah. Yeah. Then well, I said, get them, get behind me, because I'm moving forward. Thank you. That's really important. You know, thank you for it. You know, but if you're negative, I'm I'm accentuating this positive from that scenario. Yeah. So otherwise, you know, we could take a long, long conversation about the histories, and yeah. the pains, and the traumas, and all yeah. this stuff, and. 
it's all relevant. I think it's we need to own that. Mm -hmm. You know, and once we own it, we can transcend it. Right. All right. And all my work is there serving is to say, well, look, here's transcend, here's transcendental, here's transitions, and here's me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know. Mm -hmm. And I think once we kind of see that process, we, you know, we can do anything we want with that. So it's basically walking around the industry, looking at the industry, going for it, ignoring the negative self-talk. Basically. Well, no, put it into context. Yeah, put it don't, into context. Don't ignore, because ignore is denial. Right? <laughs> I believe that we need to put it into context, okay. right, and mm. then own it. Okay. You know, own your space and, you know, occupy your space, you know what I mean? But you know? focus more on what's it in front of you. What's it getting you to? What's, it, yeah. what's the point, you know? I mean, critique is, is a negative noise. Yeah. But actually, like that's my best, my best friend, whether I like it or not, because it's their opinion. You know, and actually I'm thinking, thank you, I never see it like that. I never, you know, you're allowed to see something that I didn't see. I don't necessarily agree okay. with you. But, <laughs> but some, <laughs> some dreams are killed before I even get to. Mm. When I was studying up, there's you know. There's a difference there. You know, a lot no. of dreams are killed before. Uh, see, so this is why this is important. Keep your dream to yourself. Let them manifest. Okay. Okay, you don't go throw your pearl under the swine feet because right. it will be trampled to ground. And People that's the problem with a lot of, I was speaking to my young nephew and he was saying, you know, auntie, I just want to do this. I said, well, just do deal it. With it. Because, yeah. and it's our own, our own caregivers yeah. at yeah. a fair that may stop us from wanting to pursue a dream. So it is yeah. keeping it basically. Because yeah. they can actually listen, look and see what you're doing and think, well, it's wise advice from, from, from somebody who's not doing it or not taking a step outside. I'll give you an example. I actually did a piece called The Dreamer. Um, that, and yeah. it was inspired by a book I was reading about from Carlos Castaneda, based on yeah. Don Juan, and worked with this really young designer, beautiful guy, Jason. And um, when we produced the piece, you know, um, you know, he was blind. Jason was blind to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But... I was again intuitively just guided into this process, mm -hmm. and one of the conditions I said I had with the curator um, Eddie Ocheri, um, mm -hmm. so it's at the One Night Gallery. This is years ago, nineteen seventy-eight or something like that. Nineteen no, no, ninety-eight. Nineteen ninety-eight. Right? <laughs> no, no, no. Excuse me. Was it nineteen ninety-eight or two thousand one? Two thousand one. Sorry. Okay. Right. So anyhow, um, one of the conditions was mm -hmm. that it wasn't. I was not going to publicize the piece in advance, and it will not. You would not. It would be unveiled on the night. You know, so that way, I wanted people to have the trust their own experiences rather than you know having to always sell in the work. Yeah. Because I always felt that that's robbing the art. Because you're asking me questions that actually I didn't have the answer to. Yeah. I'm still in the moment. I'm still trying to get to the moment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when we did finally present the work, it was amazing. I mean, people actually started to t express the concept of their dream wow. on the night. I mean, I had to leave the leave the gallery. It was mm -hmm. that much coming at me. Wow. You know, and you know, and you know, I thought I've never had seen that experience, let alone had that experience yeah. myself. And I think that's what people are at. Yeah. I think that's what people are at. You know, so definitely don't go giving away your dream willy yeah. nilly. You know, without you seeing that person actually applying their dream, you know, then you can share that because you yeah. can see the affinity. But you know, keep it, keep it focused and just yeah. like you know, stop trying to be like someone else. That's really important. Authenticity. Okay, so. Um, um, coming to a close now, it's been really informative and we can talk for oh, it's gone, it's gone like really fast. <laughs> but can you tell us where you're going to be? I'm going to put, um, we're going to obviously going to put your website and everything up, but just okay. tell us what's next for you and where can people reach you? Well, I mean, the website is mm. the easiest place, so there's my email there, mm. um, kofikamara at gmail.com. Okay. You know, um, kamarazi, kofiallen.weebly.com, excuse that long one, but it's temporary for now, but it will be updated and you'll be notified mm -hmm. in our public mm. galleries. Um, and, you know, the next stage is really about, you know, um, I'm looking to do more bespoke work with okay. private clients. Um, you know, I still work commercially, but I think there's a, you know, there's a growth process here. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I think the work is lending itself more towards people who are reaching out and want to explore their story. They want to invest in themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? You know, we're living in a time where mm. you know, I've watched. We've all watched. Um, you know, in this uh, what's the what's the word? A time of austerity, mm -hmm. where you know people have got their money in a bank and they've just had forty percent of that money taken from mm -hmm. them. And uh, you know, you have to ask, well, what can I invest my money in? That's right. Yeah. You know, and you know, unfortunately culture is the last thing yeah we live in a time of austerity where you know um people have their money invested in banks and you know the governments are saying yeah i'm going to come and take 40 percent mm -hmm. or 20 percent or 30 percent out of it and you know you ask yourself then what's safe do you know what i mean and for me 
a lot of people don't realize that art is one of the, one of the most um, consistent process for investment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah. and I think, you know, I want, I, want, I want the ordinary person to be able to afford some of these collections. Yeah, that's Do you know what I mean? You know, um, you know, because, you know, maybe they pull by or they buy and we mm -hmm. pay, pay off scheme or whatever. But I think, you know, I, I want to make, you know, I'm, I'm open to have the conversation. As long as they're serious. Because yeah. I'm not going to be taken for a ride, you know what yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, but at the same time, you know, I want to meet them halfway mm -hmm. and build that relationship with clients because people are growing, we go through, you know, we don't go for ups and downs, we go for cycles, Yeah. you know, so I believe that, you know, if we help each other through the cycle, when we get back to that point of reference, art is one of the things that I use as my reference, like yeah. a mantra. Well, it does affect your house, when you have art around your house, it does have an effect on your home, so you're buying, really, an effect. You know, you want to set a scene, you want to set a mood. You can, you know, you can actually change how people think by the type of art that you have in your house and yeah. the impact it could have on your family. So it's not really just about having a, a picture, it's an investment. It's just, I, think, I think it's important. An identity. It's important. It tells a story. I mean, you know, in America, you find that there's really serious art collection yeah. going on. I mean, you were surprised Swiss Beats. You know, I mean, Damon Dash, you know, yeah. I mean, these guys are collectors, yeah. Jay-Z, they're all, they're all collectors, they've got galleries, I mean, mm -hmm. Russell Simmons' brother owns a gallery, you know, they understand, yeah. you know, um, Ronnie um, Woods um, from the, the Beatles, yeah. from Rolling Stone, sorry, he's got a gallery in Barclay Square, I mean, you know, there's yeah. this huge, huge industry, um, and we need to get behind that industry, yeah. we need to get behind the creatives, I mean, you know, unfortunately, a lot of it's on the PR marketing side. But I think we get to that point of people recognizing what the yeah. talent is, and if they they can recognize the talent, I think we're going in the right direction. Well, I think these types of videos and series and shows um, will inform people that oh, you know, actually I can buy art, I can do this, I am interested in this artist, and I think that's where we have to change it by getting. All, well, yeah, you know, and, and overcoming this fact because I mean a lot of people look at the work and they're like they say to me, oh, Kofi, that's you know, are you just too expensive? And I'm just saying to them, actually, come on. Come on, let's have a conversation and let's work it out. Let's yeah. find a way. Let's you know, let's be real. If you can't buy that, mm -hmm. then look, let's work with what you can buy. Yeah. But let's build. Yeah. Could be on a journey. It's not one off. I'm here, and you know, so forth. So if I'm not here, then you go talk to some other person who's going to be hitting the price, yeah. and I can't negotiate. So yeah. while I'm here, I'm trying to give people the opportunity. That's fantastic. Okay, we've come to the end now. Well, thank you very much again, <laughs> and for all the all the, the Marilyn Fontaine beautiful fans out there thank you for listening next month we'll have fear your visa with her new book growing into myself see you then <laughs>